stars got to be stars, but we know you need help from secondary players. I'll tell you who's going to be that help and why ain't nobody scared of the Chargers. We'll do that here today on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Jaguars. I am Tony Wiggins, the host of the Locked On Jaguars Daily Podcast, where it's your team every day. And we thank you for making us your first listen, reminding you that we are free on all platforms. Wherever you get your podcasts, you can get us here at Locked On Jaguars for free. We also have to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet online is where the game starts. And once again, thank you for starting here and making us your first listen here on Locked On Jaguars. We know the star players. We know the Trevor Lawrence's and the Josh Allen's and Trayvon Walker's and Tyson Campbell's of the world have to play extremely well in order for the Jacksonville Jaguars to win. That's obvious, right? But sometimes those guys get keyed on. Sometimes those guys, the other team knows exactly what we know, and those guys are formationed out of making plays. Give you an example. I remember back when Mike Shanahan, when they won their first Super Bowl in Denver, they were playing the Packers. Mike Shanahan said that Leroy Butler was the biggest playmaker on the Packers defense, Jacksonville native Leroy Butler, Hall of Famer Leroy Butler. Somebody I competed against in high school, Leroy Butler, right? So Shanahan said, we ran the same plays, but what we did, we formationed him out. We just ran it from a different formation. So wherever he was, we'd be going the other way. We had to keep him occupied so that he would not make plays. And I just basically paraphrased all of that, but that's the way NFL people think, right? So whatever you think you're going to do or whatever you believe is a strength or whatever you've shown on tape is a strength, they they want to meet that strength with, with force. But the thing is, they also want to force you to do the things that you don't want to do, which is the things that they assume you're not doing because you're not doing it, right? And they can use the analytics to break everything down about who does what. And and we can think about it on a deep level or we can just think about it on an elementary level that teams are going to try to take away things that you do well. That is why it's so important for teams that have secondary players who can play big roles on any given Sunday. The Jaguars have some of them. I'm going to give you examples of some of those guys, and I'm going to tell you why they need to play well. First of all, the biggest part of, I wouldn't say fear because I don't have no fear of the Chargers, but if we're talking about what they do well versus what they don't, they got some, they got two guys rushing the passer. Both of them might end up in Canton. Okay, and Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. They got a corner in a Sunday Samuel who loves to break on the ball. They have a safety who I am sure and certain, as long as he continues to stay healthy, is going to Canton and Derwin James. Allowing them to dictate the game because they are physically imposing is, is a little bit of a worry. It's a little bit of, okay, how are we going to combat this? So I think the way the Jaguars are going to do that is very quick passes. Quick passes, getting guys in space. And if you do that, you're going to use a guy like Jamal Agnew, who is number one on my list for players that have to step up and have a big game in order for the Jaguars to have the success that we all hope. I am anticipating that, but that we all hope that uh, they're able to have so they can move on to round two. As a special teamer, He's special. As a receiver, he's special. As someone who you can just put the ball in his hand, he's special. Now, he did have a little bit of a hiccup uh, in the last game on a trick play where we, even when you're watching the slow motion, it was all on him. Probably didn't look the ball in. 
uh, alligator armed a little pass a little bit that he probably thought was a little high on the reverse from Trevor. But for the most part, Jamal Agnew has been – he's been a safe. He also had a 50-yard kickoff return. So he is one of the players on this team that is combustible, that is extremely dangerous, that if you find a way to have him touch it from the line of scrimmage four times in a game, nine times out of ten, three of those, uh, three of those touches are going to go for first downs. And it may go for something even longer than that. That can change field position. He did it against Dallas twice and uh, when the Jaguars needed a spark and he was able to give it to him. So he is he is numero uno on my list of people that have to step up when their name is called. Uh, someone else I'm going to mention, believe it or not, is Jamichael Hasty. And folks are like, man, he's had two games where he did anything, man. What are you talking about? You're right. But in those two games, that's that's why he's a secondary player, right? If they get to the point where they uh, take Travis Etienne out, or if there's like like if he gets bugged out on on a little bit of an injury, or if you know he's just tired, he needs a blow. Jamichael Hasty has made some big plays. He also made plays in the Dallas game. He made a play early in the year against the Indianapolis Colts. He's caught some balls. And has fought for first down yardage in, in, in a few games, especially the ones here at home. So what we're talking about is, and if, if, if you paid attention to last week when the Titans came to Jacksonville, we're not talking all day dominance. What we're talking about is, is when your number's called, make a play. And you know that it could be the difference between winning and losing. Because against the Titans, the Jaguars did not play their best game as a team, but they had guys who made plays when they needed them uh, to be made. So, yeah, um, I think those two, Jamal Agnew and Jamichael Hasty, are extremely important for uh, the result that we hope uh, that we think we're going to get Saturday night. I'm going to mention uh, about three other players, two on offense and one on defense, and I'm going to tell you why they are also important. And I'm putting these and I'm planting these things in your head so that when you do get when you get to the game or when you start watching the game and some of them happen, y'all can say, Wig, there it is right there. You said it. You said it because that's the way it is, man. You need guys who can step up and make big plays at the exact right time in order to get the result you want and win a championship. I'll talk about that more in segment two here on Locked On Jaguars. Today's show is sponsored by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. And let me tell you something, as a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in this 2023 year all depends on team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Job Solutions. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with the people who have the skills, makes sense, values and experiences to help you achieve your goals. I've used LinkedIn myself and I've benefited by being on both sides. When I had a barbershop that I needed to staff, LinkedIn helped me do it. When my daughter got out of the military, someone had posted on LinkedIn, she saw it and boom, just like that, they were matched up and she was gainfully employed immediately upon separating from the United States Army. So I've seen it happen. I've witnessed it and I've participated in it. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. LinkedIn Jobs, like I said, will help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to and faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL, one word. That's LinkedIn dot com slash locked on nfl to post your job for free terms and conditions apply y'all know i gotta tell you about another sponsor it's our friends over at built bar that's right built bar is the absolute truth and let me tell you something man i am so proud of the fact that i have been talking about built bar to so many people and now i'm regularly seeing people Eat built bars. I see people coming in the gym all the time 
with built bars and for good reason it's because they're good for you two it's because they taste good that's right and sometimes that's an oxymoron where you can get things that taste good that aren't good for you but you rarely find something that is good for you that tastes good well built bar they come in unbelievable flavors like churro peanut butter brownie and coconut almond I'm not sure how they do it, but these things taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. What's even better is they're healthy. Only 130 calories, four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And guess what? We've been telling you for years about ordering your built Bars at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of built Bars. You can pick up a four box, a four bar box of cookies and cream. Oh my God. I, I messed up saying that because that sounds so good. Double chocolate and coconut puffs. If you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13 bar box or, or with our hit flavors, brownie batter <laughs> and churro. That's right. You can thank me later. Make sure you tap in to Bill Bar. We appreciate you tapping into us here on Locked On Jaguars, where we are proud to say that you make us your first listen every single day, and you make your second listen to Locked On Sports Today podcast. My man Peter Bukowski gives you a 30-minute or less show every single day where he talks about the biggest stories in sports using local experts who actually cover those teams involved in those stories. Make sure you like and subscribe whether it's on the Odyssey app, uh, anywhere you get your podcast, whatever platform, and you'll be able to find the Locked On Sports Today podcast and make it your second listen every single day. All right, it's Friday. And my voice is still cracking. I'm still uh, overcoming some things, but I know you guys are going to be hoarse or scratchy tomorrow when it comes time to start rooting for your Jaguars in the first round of the playoffs. And I've been dying to say that for years, but now it's finally come back around. Yes, the Jacksonville Jaguars are playing at home in the first round of the playoffs. So here's the deal. I don't think there's going to be I, – I, I, I had more trepidation last week than I do this week. In segment three, I'm going to tell you why ain't nobody scared of the Chargers. And as you can tell the way I'm talking – I think the Jaguars are going to win, and I think they're going to win it convincingly. I know on our crossover I said 34-31. I think it's going to be a better uh, a better game than that uh, for Jacksonville. I think it's going to be like 34-17. But it wasn't no need for me to share that business with everybody. That's just for us, the hardcore people that cover this team every single day or, or follow this team every single day. I just sense, and I was actually around one of the players today, I sense – Confidence is not overlooking. I sense a calm confidence in this team, even in Doug Peterson. What is radiating, in my opinion, is that they fully expect to win the game. If they expect to win the game, they must know that they're going to get masterful performances out of their starters, but also – from other guys, we mentioned Jamal Agnew, who I think is number one. He's the number one candidate to be able to make sure that the Jaguars do what they're supposed to do. We talked about Jamichael Hasty, and we're not talking about all game. I'm talking about just a play. Make a play. It could be a catch on third and seven where you're behind the line and you catch it, and then all of a sudden, you got to shake and bake something just to get those two yards, and you do it, and it extends a drive. It could be one that changes field position. It could be a screen pass that goes for 15 yards at a critical part of the game. So those two guys are people that I think will have a shot to do it. Who else? I think Marvin Jones, Marvin Jones Jr., and the reason why is because He's had a propensity to make these big plays. Remember the toe tap touchdown he did when he caught it and got both feet down and they didn't think it was a touchdown, but it was. 
he's had a he's had a, a tendency just when you least expect it to make big catches in big games and he's just that that veteran who is what I call a professional pass catcher who can show up for you another player who does not all the time he doesn't play a lot he doesn't dominate all game but how about dan arnold who's made some plays for this team in some games he's made some catches that you didn't expect and that you really really seriously needed in order for this team to be victorious you're talking about if i could get one play from each one of those guys touchdown first down um if it's first and 20 and somebody gets half of that back on first down, that's great. Defensively, we know who the usual suspects are. I'm going to give you one that I think is going to have a huge impact on the game, and that is Devon Hamilton, because he has shown not only to be their top run stuffer, but he's also very, very active, and he can actually rush the passer from the middle without a blitz in order to get Justin Herbert off a square. And even though Justin Herbert can throw the ball while running, we want him to do that. We don't want him sitting back, setting his feet. I think one of the best ways to get pressure is up the middle so that there's no pocket to step into and he has to make a bunch of off-schedule throws, which he's fully capable of doing, but we want them all off-schedule. So I think Devon Hamilton, the five players that I mentioned, Jamal Agnew, Marvin Jones, Jermichael Hasty. Dan Arnold and Devon Hamilton outside of Trevor and Christian Kirk and Tyson Campbell and Josh Allen and Trevon Walker and, and Andre Cisco outside of those guys, there's going to have to be an effort from other people. And if they get this effort from those guys and get the normal effort that they get um, from everyone else, 34, 17, the reason why I can make that, prediction that bowl is because for some reason over the years when folks have talked about the Chargers, whether they were in San Diego or whether they were in or where they are now in Los Angeles, it's always been this little bit of a fear of them as this is the team you don't want to play. They're explosive, right? But I'm going to tell you right now, and we're going to talk about it on the other side. Ain't nobody scared of them because they don't, they ain't won no playoff games either. I think we're more afraid of the idea than we are the team. I'll explain all of that to you in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. To let you know about today's sponsor, was betonline.net. It is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season to basketball. We've got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at betonline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. Once again, you guys start here with us every single day, making us your first listen here on Locked on Jaguars. And that makes us really, really happy because it's your team every day. You should listen every day. Why ain't nobody scared of the Chargers? Not not, not anybody that's cut from the kind of cloth that I'm cut from. Because I'm, I'm only afraid, afraid of – I ain't afraid of too much of anything, but I only have uh, – trepidation or extra thinking done about people who actually accomplish stuff, not potential, not potential. The Jaguars aren't playing some playoff juggernaut tomorrow. They're not playing some quarterback who wins a bunch of playoff games. No, they're not playing some organization that has a whole bunch of tradition or somewhere in their history or in their building that there's a Lombardi trophy in there. No. They're playing a team that is combustible offensively, who sometimes doesn't combust. They're playing a quarterback with a world of potential to be, uh, he should be ranked in the top five because he is, he has a bunch of talent. 
But having a bunch of talent and winning in the NFL are not always hand in hand or synonymous. The more I think about this game, the more confident I get that they're in the same boat as the Jaguars. Nothing more, nothing less. That coach doesn't scare me. He ain't got no history of dialing nothing up all day long. He got more history and reputation from going for stuff, going for it when he shouldn't, taking points off the board, doing wild stuff. He's like playing against a poker player that all he does is call everything and raise everything. And he could have a seven-deuce offsuit, but he's trying to fool you and trick you. It can be frustrating because they're so unorthodox, but at the end of the day, if they keep playing reckless, reckless things will happen to them. And that's what I think is going to happen to the Chargers. I think reckless things are going to happen to the Chargers. I think the Jaguars, I think the crowd, everyone that is – I just think they're going to get run out, and I think it's going to be the atmosphere, it's going to be the players, and it's the players who believe. I think the players really, really believe that they're going to win this game. I'm not saying they're overconfident, and no one told me that. But I'm telling you just from the conversation that I had today and the feeling I get, watching them how they're moving a little bit. I think this, I think they're looking at this like ain't nothing but a chicken wing, man. Ain't no thing. We got it. If they win this game, mark my word, they're going to go to Kansas City and give the Kansas City Chiefs everything that they could ask for. That's if Cincinnati does their, their job and knocks off uh Baltimore and Buffalo has to do their job and knock off whoever the hell they playing. Miami, which Miami shouldn't have a chance to beat Buffalo with a third string quarterback. Buffalo's better and they're on an emotional high right now after being on an emotional low because of what happened to DeMar Hamlin. They're inspired. Jacksonville wins this game. They're more likely going to Kansas City. And if they go to Kansas City, having won against uh, the Chargers, they will give the Chiefs everything that they want. Trust me. I want y'all to enjoy the game. Enjoy tailgating. It's going to be a little cool. There will be a postcast as fast as I can get from the stadium to my house, which is about three minutes across the bridge, but sometimes during traffic, it's a little bit more difficult. I hope they win so everybody can kind of stay around and party outside while I can I can beeline to my car and go home and start the postcast. So there will be a postcast immediately following the game. Enjoy the game. I believe the Jaguars are going to win. You can go confidently to TIAA Bank Field tomorrow. I think our boys are going to deliver and make you proud. More than likely, the last game that will be played this uh, until the new season starts It's your last time to take a look at your boys. Do it. Celebrate. I think they're going to win the game. All right. Thanks for making us your first listen. Make sure you tap in, like, and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Until tomorrow, take care of each other, and we'll see you tomorrow night after the game.